Hey, hi, it's Carl with a K, and to you I say happy Daylight Saving Weekend. Um, happy might not be the right word for it, but here it is. It's that uh, time of year when we spring forward and we lose an hour. So I'm making this video as a entry to a contest by Clifford, the Vinyl Cheapskate, and he is doing this contest to celebrate 100 subscribers. Congratulations, Clifford. And the theme of his contest is Show Me Your Inner Cheapskate. And that felt like the perfect theme for me. Uh, maybe a little too perfect. Maybe I'm an outer cheapskate because I am always looking for a good deal. I'm looking for the, uh, the vintage copy that is nice to play. Uh, maybe not a perfect collectible, but um, is worth adding to my library as uh, great music. The first one in Clifford's uh, contest, the first category is Show Me a Dollar Record. And uh, there were a few I could have picked from. I decided to pick this copy of Grover Washington Jr.'s uh, All the King's Horses uh, from 1972. I found this at uh, Variety Records in Southeast Portland. They were doing a sidewalk clearance sale. And uh, the copy, this was... Uh, just a buck at uh, Variety Records. And uh, Grover Washington, probably best known for kicking off what we know now as uh, smooth jazz. And um, I would say he did it best. The problem with smooth jazz was not Grover Washington Jr., but was all of the imitators, too many imitators uh, that um, couldn't do what Grover could do. Uh, I feel like he had he had the energy, he had the spark, um, the uh, the fire under the surface that kept it exciting and interesting, even though he wasn't blowing you away with uh, fireworks. Um, but there was there was there was life in his music, uh, in and he was very smooth. For the second category, Clifford says, "Show me some cheap heat." And uh, I have to admit, I had to learn some new vocabulary for this one. Um, I'm hoping I'm not the only one that'll make me feel better. So by cheap heat, he means tell us about an artist or an album that's hot, great music, but uh, you can find it cheap consistently. Um, so I'd say it's something that's underrated and affordable. So there's your cheap heat. So for that, I thought of the Crusaders who were uh, originally the Jazz Crusaders in the 60s, and right around 1970 changed their name to just the Crusaders. And the core of that group uh, was Joe Sample on keyboard, Wilton Felder on sax, and Styx Hooper on drums. And they met in high school in Houston, Texas, and they started playing, uh, formed the Crusaders. And uh, right around the mid-70s, I feel like they were making their best, they were making their best records. So. Um, I'm going to represent them by these three in a row. That in 1975, they released uh, Chain Reaction. That was 75. And in 76, they released Those Southern Nights. And in 77, they put out Free as the Wind um, by the Crusaders. And those are all on ABC Blue Thumb Records. Um, and those guys were just effortless in their uh, ability to blend the funky and the jazzy, um, and again, keep it kind of smooth, uh, but they did it so well. And uh, their keyboard player, Joe Sample, um, appeared on a lot of recordings. He was apparently a sought-after studio keyboard player. I keep finding him pop up on records all over the place in the 70s especially. Um, and so just a few of them, uh, he was on Joni Mitchell's uh, Court and Spark. He appeared on Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On. And he appeared on uh, Steely Dan's Asia. So um, Joe Sample uh, recorded with uh, a lot of folks. And um, so the Crusaders are, are a group to look for. So the third category for Clifford's contest, he says, tell us about a great all-around score. It made me think of the time I visited a Goodwill in Tillamook, Oregon, uh, near the Oregon coast. And uh, I found, I, I did, I picked up more records at that Goodwill than I had ever before. 
Um, and being in Goodwill, every one of these was $2.99. Um, and uh, these are just actually some of them. And some of these I've talked about before. Um, but I was excited to find uh, a copy of Ray Charles' Greatest Hits. That's fantastic representation. Just all, every one of them is a great track. And a couple of these were uh, these psych pop, psychedelic pop and uh, chamber pop from the 60s that I didn't know about, but I uh, was excited to find out about them. And so this one is by The Family Tree. It's called Miss Butters. Um, and this is the project Sagittarius and their album Present Tense at Goodwill. And cool artwork on the back of that one too. Um, and a couple of jazz. Um, this is a copy um, of, of Pharaoh Sanders' album, not typical of his. Uh, this is kind of a kind of a gospel jazz. It's called "Oh Lord, Let Me Do No Wrong." So um, it's a very approachable Pharaoh Sanders record, um, and uh, maybe one of the coolest to me. These were all pretty cool, but this one I was excited about when I saw. Cannonball Adderley's Cannonball Sharpshooters on Mercury. Um, and all of them were in pretty darn good shape. <laughs> and uh, again, Goodwill, so they were only $2.99 each. It was amazing. Um, so the fourth category, Clifford says, tell us about a budget bin steel. Um, and that one, that made me think of the time I visited uh, Everyday Music for a record store day, and I picked up some of the new releases, and then I went through uh, some of their budget bin uh, records and found this copy of a Ron Carter album called Where um, on Status Records. And it's a 1964 release. Uh, this is the only record I have on status. This is the status label. And um, so in this record, Ron Carter, he's uh, the band leader uh, as a not, uh, he's played bass on dozens of jazz recordings. And in this case, he was the band leader. Uh, he played bass and in some cases he played cello. And uh, so he uh, appears with Eric Dolphy, who plays some wind instruments. He, Eric Dolphy played uh, bass clarinet, alto sax, and flute on this, uh, and Mal Waldron on piano. Um, so the rest of the group, the uh, rhythm section, we got George DeVivier on bass and Charles Persip on drums. It was, it was less than $5. Uh, it's not a perfect copy. The cover is, is a little dog-eared, uh, has a little bit of dirt and water damage, but it's pretty complete, and the record is very playable. No skips, no scratches, and um, so I was excited to find that, and at a great, great, great price in the bargain bin. So the fifth and final category uh, for Clifford, he says, tell us about a great thrift store find, um, and some of these have already been that. Um, I decided on this one. Uh, this is a record by Mose Allison that I found at a Goodwill. Um, this is Mose in Your Ear from 1972. It's a, it's a live recording in a club from the In Your Ear Club in Palo Alto, California, um, on Atlantic. And, uh, Mose is, is, he's a pianist and he sings and he's got a pretty distinctive voice. Um, he writes some pretty distinctive poetic, uh, lyrics for his tunes. So this is my... Mo, one Mose Allison record so far. Um, so great introduction to him. And again, at a Goodwill for just $2.99. Didn't want to pass that up. So those are the five. If you want to participate, I will put a link to Clifford's uh, video below in the description. Congratulations, Clifford, for reaching 100 subscribers. Um, thank you for having this contest. All of you, thank you for watching. Let me know if you're familiar with any of those records, if you have thoughts. Um, and uh, in the meantime, you keep listening to music, and I will go turn the record over.